Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us today for today's webinar, um, Networking with Wire, presented by Michael Paul. A um, couple of housekeeping items before we get started. The webinar will be recorded or is being recorded, and the slides as well as the recording will be emailed out to you um, in the next day or so. If you have any questions, there's a chat box on your screen. Please type that in and we'll answer it. Um, if it's a technical issue, we'll get to you as soon, uh, right away. And Michael will either take questions as he goes or he'll take questions at the end. Um, Michael Paul, the speaker today, is the co-founder and co-creator of the M&E Group, a marketing consulting firm based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> that has served a wide range of industries, including consumer re retail, oil and gas, industrial, construction, defense, and nonprofit since 1997. Michael spends a lot of his time teaching various subjects to corporate employees and entrepreneurs, he instructs them on brand identity, brand management, and brand reputation, as well as online presence and optimization. He consults with many small businesses and advises on revenue growth strategies, including lead generation and conversion via cutting edge effective online strategies. Michael began his career in a tenant design for retail for the retail market of asset protection. He quickly discovered a preference for the front end of the business and made a transition to, into product management his first year in corporate. From there, the influence on people to action, i.e. marketing, has become his passion. And with that, Michael, I'll give the floor to you. All right, thank you, Scott. I'm really excited to be here, and I'm glad to see such a diverse group. So let's get right to it. If you are not online, you need to get online. If you are online, but are not being smart with your current online persona, you're literally lugging around a bucket with holes. Anything that gets poured into that bucket is going to leak out over time. Now, both of those scenarios, whether you're offline or online but not being smart about it, leave you wondering why others are getting the opportunities, the jobs, the, the promotions, connections, the revenue opportunities, and you're not. <clears throat> well, today we're going to patch those holes in your bucket. Hello, everyone. I am Michael with the M&E Group, offering a behind-the-scenes scoop of how to network with WIRE. We, as a company, the M&E Group, do a lot of webinars and on-site workshops. In fact, what you're about to hear today is a condensed version of a 12-module course on the same subject, yet with an output of a fully implemented digital blueprint plan. Our time here together uh, today is best spent interacting when possible. My goal today is to direct you on a path to travel down, an online journey, if you will. I promise to keep to equip you with the relevant logic, reasoning, and especially a lot of recommended online tools to help you. In exchange, I ask that you interact as frequently as possible. I take questions in real time. My output goal or your takeaway is a working plan to get yourself and or your company not only online, but online with an optimized, efficient, automated presence. Now, Scott, I'd like to kick out the first two questions uh, can you push those out for me? Sure thing. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And if you guys could just click, uh, click the answer, I suspect we'll see the answers dynamically here. First question is, what stage in your career are you at? If you could just click the closest, the closest answer to what fits you. Okay. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, can we kick out the second question, Scott? Yeah. Okay, very good, very good information. So we are, we are over half a group. We are supervisors and managers. It's very good to know. And the second question is, are there any business owners or entrepreneurs attending today? And if so, can you share the number of employees? Okay, I think that'll do it. We can go back to the, uh, the first slide. First slide, I mean the... Um... Well, let me just uh, take a look here at these results. We've got, oh gosh, we got, uh, we have more than I thought. We're 80% non-entrepreneurs, but 20% entrepreneurs. I like that, very good. Yeah, let's go back to slide uh, the, the cover slide, networking with wire number nine. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Okay, thanks guys for participating in that. That does, frankly, guide me a little bit in terms of the direction of this presentation. Um, <clears throat> we do have some giveaways, uh, as I may have mentioned earlier. I, I don't know that I did. Um, the first giveaway or all the giveaways come from the M&E Group's existing product suite. One of the giveaways is an online personal brand optimization review. This is valued at just under $300. This is a deep dive scan of your current online presence and your inner connectivity. The second giveaway is a personalized body language analysis. This is actually a video submission by you to us where after viewing, we'll comment extensively and give you some uh, consultation and recommendations in report form. This is just under a $200 value. The last giveaway is an optimized resume analysis to ensure employment marketability. This is valued at $97. Now we have about 50 minutes or so together, uh, even though truly we need about two days together with this content. To be sure, at the end of this presentation, I'll be showing you a number of online tools and I will provide that tool list to you in report form uh, upon request. So be sure to just connect with me on LinkedIn if you want that uh, deliverable, that is that list of online tools with URLs and, and some other information. I do want to extend a sincere thanks to the fantastic folks at IEEE Computer Society, Eric, Scott, Kerry, everybody that's involved Thank you very much. We don't take this lightly, your entrustment with your membership. We appreciate that, and we take it to heart. A shout out to the M&E Group support team. A special thanks to Elsa. So guys, let's get on your running shoes and, and let's go. Gotta feed the lawyers, guys. Here's our disclaimer, and I'm gonna read it to you. This presentation is intended for educational purposes. Contents of this presentation may or may not be ours. Shake well before using. Batteries not included. Void where prohibited. Use only as directed. Side effects of this presentation may include promotions, better chairs, itching, redness, and occasional fainting. If conditions persist, consult your physician. Do not reproduce without express consent. Drink your water, exercise regularly, and call your mother. Reading this presentation does not constitute legal advice. Should you need legal advice, seek legal advice. It's a little bit, a little bit of humor, guys. Um, really, the message here is if you need to replicate or reproduce the content in any way or fashion, just reach out to us. We will absolutely work with you. We have in the past with prior clients. It's really not a big deal to us. Okay, <clears throat> you know me. Allow me to introduce you to the M&E group. What's our gig? We are the m and &E Group. Our customers invest in us to create for themselves a presence that rides above the noise of all other media, creating differentiation and visibility. And we all know that when you have a differentiator based on value with lots of eyeballs on it, that spells money. Our customers 
are investing in a holistic approach to training and marketing needs. Our differentiator in the marketplace is the identification of the gaps and the holes in the aforementioned leaky bucket. And then developing the right patch with services like digital blueprint analysis, client generation, reputation management, social media marketing, web design, Facebook retargeting, message and video marketing, content curation, and much, much more. You might be asking, well, where does the connection with IEEE, the computer society, come from? Well, it turns out that our co-founder has a very strong connection with professional societies, and through her, we found out the incredible value and the incredible work that they do. We're always excited to partner with them. It's hard to find, frankly, another proposition where, as a professional, you can find relevant, timely, and efficient content connections and support. Frankly, in our minds, you guys investing in your computer society membership is an incredibly smart move. We're always excited to partner with people like that. We love smart. So what are we endeavoring to do today? Well, today we're going to define networking. That word has its own meaning and interpretation amongst many, some good, some bad. However, no matter your school of thought, we all know it's vital to our success. To implement that success, understanding the why of networking is certainly important. The psychology of networking will be discussed. There may be someone in the room, maybe someone, say, in operations, for example, or a massive introvert like myself who doesn't see the need to be doing this. But we, as a people collectively, are networking and selling all the time. More to come on that. We will touch on old or offline methodologies versus new and online methodologies. And we will determine what are our online networking goals are. We'll touch on the importance of attitude and intention and then segue into a strategy session. We'll then reveal some common pro tips and then spend some time in the toolbox. So what is networking? You can certainly read the definition on the slide. Well, some people have a natural passion for it, namely the extroverts who love and thrive on social interaction Many understandably see it as brown-nosing, exploitative, and inauthentic, disingenuous, if you will. But when we studied 165 lawyers at a local law firm, we found that their success depended on their ability to network effectively, both internally, to, to get the business, to get themselves the assigned, or get themselves assigned to choice clients, and externally to bring business into the firm. Those who regarded these activities as distasteful and avoided them had fewer billable hours than their peers. In today's world, networking is an absolute necessity. <clears throat> A mountain of research shows that professional networks lead to more job and business opportunities, broader and deeper knowledge, improved capacity to innovate, faster advancement, and greater status and authority. Building and nurturing professional relationships also improves the quality of work and increases job satisfaction. Networking is the exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions. It is the cultivation of productive relationships for employment and or business. Now that we know the what, why do we need to do this? Because networking highlights your gifts and talents. On the other side, though, it exposes the business's loss from not teaming up with you. Through networking, you will absolutely <clears throat> gain opportunities. You may have otherwise lost or may have never even been privy to. Effective networking helps us build a team that's always in our corner. It provides 
resources to call when you feel lost about your career, for example, or even when you want to move on. You know, speaking of moving on, uh, one of the main reasons people leave their job is because of burnout. And one of the main causes of burnout is work-related stress. A network of people that have been there and done that, that know somebody, can be the solution. You know, another reason for leaving is isolation. I felt this actually at a prior employee myself. There's nothing worse than not being able to connect and break into that circle. Through networking, though, you can create or be a part of a better suited circle. A healthy network provides a vast array of resources otherwise unknown or inaccessible. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when, for example, you are tasked with a new project. You can tap into the network's <clears throat> shared resources in Excel. We can use the network's experience and technical advice whenever we want, whenever needed. This is a really great thing. And as a side for us introverts, networking with WIRE is our jam. No belly to belly, no eye to eye, just WIRE. And let's be honest, it's always in the who you know, always. And with networking, you can be in the know. It is said that networking is leveraging the power and the resources of many, and that's the truth. The psychology of marketing and network and selling is really just influencing people to an intentional action. We're always selling. We're selling at home, we're selling at school, we're selling at work. No matter if it's a product, an idea, or ourselves, we must market if we want to influence our audience. So how do I sell or how do I market myself? Well, we start by identifying our traits and our qualities and managing their exposure to the public. So it's easier for our audience to select us for the project, to select us for the job, or to select us for the contract. This also makes it clear to our audience of what the business cost is for not doing business with us. No matter what the product is, we must discover and we must understand what triggers or influences our audience. To select us for the new project, choose us for the new job, choose us for the awarded contract. Marketing is marketing. Whether it's a candy bar or a piece of industrial equipment, or ourselves, the psychology is identical. What used to happen just a few years back at a golf outing or a cocktail hour is now happening at the vertiginous speeds thanks to connectivity. The new golf courses are social networks. So why network with wire? <clears throat> Speed and eyeballs, two words, speed and eyeballs. Why network with wire? Speed and eyeballs. Most people live in a world that's framed by the speed and exposure of information. That's living in a reactive mode though. Managed online networking offers a proactive model <clears throat> that is effective and frankly, it's a lot of fun. This model is about expanding your frame, not being limited by it. Another reason why managed online networking is critical is because it eliminates the perceptions rule theory. The perceptions rule theory suggests that our online aptitude and presence or lack of is a linear measurement of our general capabilities. What does that mean? Well, for example, if a worker that has a Facebook account or has an online presence of some sort or doesn't have that, may not get the same consideration as an online equivalent that does have those accounts. Fair or unfair, that's, that's the perceptions rule. So what I'd like to do now is, I don't have a push out question for this, but I'd like to ask the audience this question, and you can respond in the Q&A. Why do you want to network online is my first question, and what are your goals? What are your goals? Now, I'm pushing a slide out for your viewing right now that are some answers to those questions from prior, prior sessions and prior clients. 
I'd be very interested in see, seeing some answers from you uh, to those questions. What are your goals and why would you network online? Okay. You can enter those answers right in the right in the uh, box, the answer box. Okay, John, I see job search. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Ah, very interesting. Looking for clients. It's the modern way. I, I like that, John. Gary's looking for clients. John's looking to change jobs. Ah, considering a software consulting, Michael, gotcha. Okay, Rick, I, I, I feel your pain on that layoff. Yeah, I just know it's important. I gotcha. Great answers, guys. I appreciate that. To switch careers, job search, to expose my academic. Okay, great. Well, I just got, uh, I'd like to give our, our resume giveaway away right now. That's going to go to John, John, John P-I-G-G. -G. Uh, John, we'll be in touch with you uh, after to go ahead and initiate that, that reward. Congratulations. Getting rec recognition. Okay, I see that. Expand the presence for academic purposes. Very good. Online education. Generic growth. Okay. Joe, to find customers for a new business. Very good. Client, uh, uh, client getting methods. I like that. Getting recognition. Boy, great, great answers, guys. Yep. To launch a new business for Daniel. Very good. Very good. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Very good interaction, guys. Thanks very much. <clears throat> So the next item to discuss is the how, and this is kind of our segue into a short strategy session, uh, how to network with WIRE. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Online engagement diverges very little from offline engagement as it relates to things like motivation, intention, preparation, and just, just plain being present. Understanding your why will mitigate some of these, but please spend some time and determine your motivation for doing what you are doing. In fact, incorporate a vision for your endeavor here. All right, since this isn't a talk on the intangibles, but the tangibles, let's, let's list some tactical things that need to happen now. We've discovered our goals just a minute ago from the prior slide. It's time to now deploy some tactics. So the first thing, what do we need to do? We need to take inventory of our current digital assets. <clears throat> what do you have for the public to see now? And what is your prevailing message to them? What needs to be changed? You may want to start a new account or some accounts that are more business or professionally related, but I will say that there is value in staying with your existing accounts as they are already seasoned. And what I mean by seasoned is that the bots have already crawled all over those accounts. There is some equity, some I'll call it bot equity in those accounts where the internet knows that site or that URL. So if you delete that and start a new one, just understand there will be a time frame of seasoning before you, you get to where you're at now. So if you can, clean up existing pictures, clean up posts, connections, groups, likes, before you start soliciting participation in your audience's groups and forums, which is a strategy we'll talk about later. In fact, in the tools section, we've got some picture tools for you to, uh, to help with this. Now, as you go on this kind of online journey, you're going to want multiple accounts in both the social environment and in the many directory listing sites out there. 
<clears throat> your information in these sites, though, and these listings has to be accurate for this to work. This is important because if the bots detect variances across the sites, they will stop crawling your site and you'll be rendered effectively offline, at least in terms of searchability. Use NAP optimization techniques. That NAP is just an acronym for name, address, and phone. Optimize that across all your sites. It's very, very important. Please also understand your reputation. Use tools to see yourself as others see you online. If it needs fixing, let's, let's fix it. It's easy. The next thing to do is to create a posting schedule and do it with intention. Show up at your scheduled time. Consider a content posting strategy based on your or your audience's current interests. This too can be automated, as we'll see later. And when you post, engage, truly engage. Smile. I know you're smiling at the computer, but smiling does something chemically to you where your output, even through the keyboard, will be changed. I believe that. Be prepared. Make this your business. Your online profile is your business card. Be effective and efficient, which speaks to using automation tools. And with regards to posting on any social site and even multiple social sites, Buffer and Hootsuite are two common auto-posting tools. We'll look at these more in the tools section. In addition to auto-posting, we can also apply automation to our calendars, for example, with a tool called Calendly. This tool empowers your calendar with automation to serve you in a variety of ways. Be sure to connect with me and we can discuss the best use case for you. On a personal note, I actually upload all of my personal calendar items on here as well as my business items. It pings us any way we want it to, but it also has unmatched integration capabilities with a host of, other, uh, of a bunch of other web apps that other calendars can't do. Now on the next so slide, you can see what one of my, pro my business prospects sees when, when he clicks my ad. My ad may be on Facebook or Google PPC or whatever. But the point of this isn't whether this is business or entrepreneur. The point of this slide is to highlight the automation capabilities of Calendly. And we'll see that on the next slide. So back to posting. When you post, don't shout. Connect. Please, please stay away from religion and politics. Connect with people. Give, give, give. Be authentic, post relevance. And by this, I mean to post content that is relevant to your end state. Do you want to attract audience members or not? Then re if yes, then research and find out what is relevant to them and post it. Engage with them. Ask them questions. Comment with them. Well, you may say at this point, how do I find relevant content? Ha, ah, great segue. I am very glad you asked. We'll show you a few curation sites that you can use that will absolutely solve that problem. Now, what's your, this graphic that you're looking at, I'll, I'll take you back to my comment about this is what one of my prospects sees when I, when I market uh, a certain ad, and what we're advertising is a 60-minute phone call. Uh, we, we call it a blueprinting session. Um, and when they click the ad, it goes right to my Calendly calendar, and you can see that it provides them an opportunity to click a date and click a time, and when they do that, the automation in the background goes to my CRM, it goes to my autoresponder, it logs them into our system, and it kicks out a, an automated email sequence over the next 30 days. Now, none of that matters if, you're, if this doesn't apply to you. This is, uh, the point is uh, it's automation that we need to adopt, and we don't have time to get into every use case uh, live now. But again, connect with me, and we can discuss that in terms of the use case. 
Um, <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to talk about some uh, success uh, tips using LinkedIn. Now, we, we, we always recommend the big three plus YouTube, I call it, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and as a side, YouTube, depending upon what your goals are. We don't have time to go through all of those, so we just selected LinkedIn to talk about in terms of success tips. These span across uh, most of the social networks, uh, so all, all of these are applicable. Um, when you're looking at your profile, research keywords that are common on that social site. Use the keywords in your descriptions and in your interests. Use a professional profile image. And you may not have to do this if your goal isn't to get a job, to change jobs, to, uh, to pursue uh, your, your progress in academia, whatever it is. If it's one of those, you've got to use a professional profile image. Now, the third bullet, guys, you've got, you got to buy LinkedIn Premium. you got to do it. It's about 79 bucks per quarter, uh, and it will give you access to a lot of cool stuff that I'll mention when we get to the tool slide. But please, you've got to consider that. What's your name and what do you do? Fill that out. Offer complete contact information. Nothing is more frustrating than going and finding a person you want to contact, and then they have you know, half of that filled out, and you never can get a hold of them. Fill it out. You want people to connect with you. Perhaps grab a, a custom URL. Make sure your profile is visible. Consider a badge. If you speak uh, additional languages, market that. Absolutely market that. <clears throat> Update connections in your background. Media links, guys, have a lot of Google juice. They uh, rise you in the search en engines very quickly. Use them. Review skills and endorsements, add or update projects and publications, ask and give recommendations. Very, very powerful. Regularly post. That speaks to that schedule of posting that we talked about early, earlier. Review your group memberships. So before we dive into the toolbox, I'd like to show you some pretty interesting little factoids around social media. There are certain times to schedule for your postings that will solicit a better response and a higher quality audience than other times. So let's take a look at the graphic on the next slide to show that. You can see here we've got Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. You'll see that Twitter has a couple hours in the afternoon that are, that are the best times, uh, similarly with Facebook. But what's interesting is LinkedIn is the only one that has an hour uh, or a couple hours in the morning and then an hour at the close of business. Guys, this has been researched heavily. Use these times to your advantage. You can, now that you have auto posters, Buffer and Hootsuite, like we talked about before, schedule those posts to go in those time frames. Remember, this is all a part of your strategy. Post when people are looking. <clears throat> now, I know when I, uh, when I created my profiles on any one of the accounts that we have, that it was a real pain to work with my pictures. I never could get it right in terms of what sizes, what pixel sizes I needed, and for what account. Well, on this next slide, this next slide will be a very good reference for you. You can size all of your pics as needed with this reference tool, so take a look. You can see you can just pocket this, snapshot it, whatever you want to do. Those are the collectively, you know, all in one place, all of the pic sizes that you need for all of those accounts. Okay, we've got just a little bit time left. Let's go ahead and talk tools now. <clears throat> now, some of these slides are tweaked, and we can't see some of the info on them. But I have the, the, these tool slides arranged so that the title will be the descriptor of the tool. I'll say a little bit about each, but in the interest of time, I'll move pretty quickly through these. And remember, I can disseminate that list of these tools to anyone who uh, reaches out or expresses that they want it. So social sites, what, what do we recommend? I mentioned it before, the big three plus YouTube should be the focus. I mentioned this before, we recommend purchasing LinkedIn Premium, especially if you are networking for a job or trying to get past gatekeepers to reach decision makers. I used the Premium when I was with a medical device company some years ago. 
and had tremendous success reaching engineers and purchasing folks. I went right through the gatekeeper. I was able to grow that business quite large in a short period of time. It's very, very valuable. We also recommend Message Hero for Facebook. Message Hero will automate your messenger and direct people where they need to go. It will automate your conversations with prospects, with contacts inside the messenger environment with unlimited follow-ups. If you're an Instagram guy or gal, use Follow Adder. This is a network building tool on autopilot. It's fantastic. You get real Instagram followers, schedule auto automated photo posts, automated photo and video liker and commenter. It has a powerful search engine. You can search by location. You can search by hashtag. You can even create exportable, uh, exportable uh, lists of users or people that have uh, like interests as you. Let's look now at some auto posting tools. We mentioned these earlier. The first one is uh, buffer. So we gather all this content and then what? Well, then we schedule it to be auto posted according to the times that we just learned. Schedule your posting as per that schedule. Buffer is a real common auto poster and has all the necessary features to auto post. It has a free version in fact, and it automates and saves time in a big, big way. Add this to your arsenal of automation tools, and this, and this will be one of the many cogs in your automation wheel. The next tool is Hootsuite. <clears throat> now, Hootsuite is a bit more feature-rich than Buffer. It has scheduling, managing, and reporting features, which is super useful for your monthly analytics if you're into that. We, saw, we see on the, um, on the picture, uh, on the graphic on the slide, you can see that on the calendar that it, when you schedule your posts, it, it uh, includes a picture. And then down below, you can see for this particular example in this post, it got 472 likes, and it kind of graphs that over time. Now, we saw previously that we can also automate uh, our calendars. Let's take a look at Calendly. This is the same graphic as before, but I do want to just highlight the integration capabilities of this, of this particular tool. Um, it integrates uh, mainly for us uh, with, a, with, a, with another tool called Zapier, which we'll talk about next. Um, there is a screenshot of what, what my prospect sees as I discussed before. But again, the, the takeaway from this, this slide is that automation is key. We don't do anything from uh, procuring that customer all the way to uh, getting on the phone with that customer. We have no interaction thanks to automation. Now the next is Zapier. <clears throat> Zapier is what is the trigger, if you will. It moves information between your web apps automatically so you can focus on your work. Uh, now when I say integration, I mean the ability for these tools to talk to each other. Zapier moves information uh, across 1,500 integrated apps. It's a huge time saver. I mentioned it, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier one example of what Zapier does for our company, many, many more. It's an invaluable tool. Um, you can see on the graphic here, uh, the schematic, it has a Gmail icon. That's the trigger. When you get a Gmail, when you get a new email in Gmail, it kicks it over to Dropbox. It copies the attachment from Gmail to Dropbox, and then it alerts Slack, which is a, uh, an integration tool, uh, that you have a new Dropbox file. Easy, easy stuff to implement, very, very valuable. <clears throat> Let's talk now about some pictures. We all need pics, and lots of them. So where do I get them? Well, right here. Pexels, Pixabay, and Unsplash, and there are many, many more, are all royalty-free photo sharing sites. No worries about copyrights, etc. All are good. I use them all. Canva and 99designs are design and editing sites. Canva is free and a do-it-yourself design studio where 99designs is like an Angie's list of designers and agencies. You submit a project and they find one of their designers to complete. So use these guys. You can make a logo in three minutes on Canva. You can, you can uh, make a resume header. In, uh, in a minute with Canva. Very, very valuable, and again, it is value priced at being free. So 
if I'm supposed to post regularly, where do I get stuff to post? Well, right here. Content curation is the procuring of content that is relevant to your audience. All of these sites are searchable with mountains of great content. Flipboard, for example, is a curated content site whose model is to create storyboards with content. Visit it. It's a fascinating site with seemingly endless content. The next one, Pocket, is searchable with content but also allows you to quickly save content by clicking the Pocket on the top right of your browser. You can use this as you scroll through content, click it, it'll save it in the Pocket, no more messing with bookmarks and hundreds and hundreds of bookmarks and not finding your, your content. You can also categorize what's inside of the pocket for uh, categorically and scheduling your, your different posts. E-Links uh, helps you save web links, bundle web links, and turn your collections into email newsletters, website blog content, single web pages, social media links, that's, that's, that's what I want to highlight, and much more. So all of this might be a little bit overwhelming in terms of when are you going to have time to do all this, and do I have to do it myself? Well, no. The answer is no. Can you have someone do the work for you? The answer is absolutely yes. Digital contract work. You can pretty much get anything done digitally now online via freelance or contract work. If you look at the three companies I have li listed here, Freelancer is one of the largest freelance sites on the globe. A use case would be something like this. Pretend you have an upcoming presentation for $5, $10, maybe $15. And within potentially 24 hours, you can get professional graphics, loads of unique content, and even a voiceover transcript if you need it, and any other thing you can think of. For example, instead of pie charts in Excel, how boring. You can have an image that speaks intimately with your audience. No learning curve inexpensive, and you, you, you look like a rock star. Now, the second company, Fiverr, it's, it's similar, but perhaps a little less expensive. I'm, I use Fiverr so much. I use Fiverr and outsourcing uh, uh, folks a lot. Fiverr started as a contract site a long time ago where everything, or most everything, was $5. But that, of course, was short-lived, and everything is simply value-priced right now. But the contractors on, on all three of these sites live and die by reviews and evaluations. So you get A-plus work from all three of these guys. Uh, the third one is Upwork, which I didn't mention, but that's, uh, I believe that's owned by Freelancer, and that lists agencies as well as uh, independent freelancers. So that being said, what do I look like? What do I look like online? This is extremely important. There are some companies that you can use to see what your reputation is online. I have one listed here called The Hoth. Now, The Hoth is really an SEO services company with a reputation auditing arm and software that you can use to look for your company. This will give you some insight into the map as well, name, address, phone number, and its consistency across directory listings. Very important. If you quickly look at that graphic, and I'm running out of time, so I need to move pretty quickly, you can see that at the top you might see issues and overall score. That speaks to what some of the issues are and why your score is 83 out of 100 and not 100 out of 100. It talks about reviews, where you got them, are they valuable, are, you know, what's the, are they fake reviews, real reviews, et cetera. Um, if you look to the left on that green uh, logo called My Life, uh, my life, is, among many others, is well worth the investigation to run the report to see what others are seeing about you personally, not your company, but you personally. That might be valuable for you. Um, once you use that service, you can remove yourself from the database afterwards. Now, <clears throat> I want to announce a second winner, uh, or second winner of our, of our giveaway. The uh, body language analysis goes to Kamal. Minocha. Um, I apologize if I'm, I'm getting that wrong. Kamal will be in touch with you for sure. Thank you for, thank you for um, interacting with us. Okay, so <clears throat> to sum up the tools, do you remember when we made the comparison between online and offline networking? In networking offline, we did everything we could to be, 
to appear clean, professional, interesting. Well, in the same way, these tools will give us the same appearance online. We will appear clean. We will appear professional, efficient, interesting, albeit online. Okay. All right. We did it, guys. Uh, we did it. We got through that. But here are some final uh, thoughts that I have before we take questions or wrap up. Quickly, you got to know your audience. Please know your audience. Otherwise, this is a complete waste of time. If you don't know what triggers them, we're, we're, we're on a tangent. And pick one or two social platforms. Don't go crazy with all three or four. Pick LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. You might pick just one to start with. Select personal KPIs, key performance indicators. Hold yourself accountable to your posting schedule. This stuff works. Show up daily to your scheduled posting time. Create a content bank. Do that with Pocket. Throw all your content in Pocket. Categorize it. That's your bank. Then take your, take your deposits of your bank, put them in auto poster, and get them out to the marketplace, to those groups and those forums that you are interested in or your audiences are interested in. Post relevant content. We talked about that. Be present, guys. Just pay attention. Curate. Don't copy. And always remember there's people behind these silly computer screens. They're actual people with hearts and minds. Engage. Ask questions. Provide feedback. Okay. In summation, I, I, I think we achieved our goals today to give at least a cursory look, a cursory strategy approach to what, what we're endeavoring to do. I hope this information was helpful. We, if you look at the slide, we did define networking. We did uh, discover our why to network with WIRE. We discussed old methods versus new. We assessed or looked at at least our online reputation. We explored uh, intention and preparation. We identified our online goals. We, we drafted a personal strategy, if you will, and we did take a peek inside the toolbox. And I do use the word peek because there are hundreds more tools. Uh, and again, it's all about a use case. So we can talk about that another time as well. Um, I do want to say uh, thanks so much, everyone. I hope this was helpful for your patience and your interest. Uh, please connect with us uh, uh, on the next slide. You'll see our contact information. And I do want to um, say thank you Eric, Scott, Kerry, IEEE, the Computer Society, for entrusting us with your membership. I hope you brought value. And I will take questions now or hand it to Scott. I'm not sure of the time I have left. Hey, Michael, um, that was great. We have about 10 minutes left, so why don't we give them a, a minute or so for some questions to come in? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Well, I see some here. Let's see. Okay, here's one from Michael. Uh, with content, any suggestions on how to come across as more interesting than interested? Ah, very, very good question. Uh, Michael, do you mean with content? Does that mean curated content, or does that mean content about yourself? in trying to make yourself more interesting. Could you, could you comment on that? Mark, seems like using curated content could backfire, especially if multiple users are using the same curated content. How do you avoid appearing to have plagiarized something? Well, the intent, uh, Mark, good question, by the way. The intent is not to plagiarize or not to hide the fact that you're, you're sharing content. That's what this is about, is sharing. So please don't try to uh, hide the content, be very open. And with regards to people sharing the same content, it's a big network out there. Uh, if you're sharing the same and, and that end user or that audience member notices two people sharing the same thing, I would venture to guess the impact is low. Uh, but good question, Mark. I appreciate that. Where can I download the slides? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, we'll be emailing the slides out to everyone. Okay. Uh, it's another, Michael's uh, agreeing with Mark's on the curated content. Um, guys, I urge you to go take a look at those curation sites. The content is seemingly endless. 
um, take a look at that. The the likelihood of of uh, uh, same content being posted in the same person seeing it in the same audience is is unlikely. And even if it does, this is about sharing. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Alexis, are those tools for millennials, or how do you see that for people over fifty? Okay. You know that's a that's a legitimate question. Uh, Alexis, it is not as hard as it may seem. Uh, I encourage you to maybe uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'll give you some tips on, or, or on some, or, or some uh, intro videos that I know of that, that may help. Uh, Jennifer is asking, how do I get over feeling inauthentic if all I'm doing is posting other people's content? My general feeling about the internet is anything I might say. Somebody else has already said better. I, uh, I'm with you, Jennifer. I understand that. But it's not all you're doing is posting other people's content. You're, you are sharing relevant content based on your audience's interests, but you're also posting experiences. Yeah, and interpretive. Um, almost every article, Gary says, on LinkedIn is shared. I'm embarrassed for them. Okay, well, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, remember, we're not posting, or we're trying not to post generally on a wall. I would, you know, depending upon what your goal here is, you're want you're going to want to post in groups that are of interest and related to your end state. Posting on a LinkedIn wall is okay, but it's not targeted. That's the word I want. It's targeted. Um, Let's see here. Jorge, how often do you post on LinkedIn? Oh, Elsa looks like she answered that one. Uh, let's see. Fasai, uh, Fasal uh, is asking, how do you see people who brag about their PhD work in Twitter or post any work they do? How do you see people who brag about their PhD work in Twitter? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. If if somebody's just being braggadocious, just let it go. Just let it chronologically scroll down the wall. But remember, guys, the point of this is to target, to be intentional and to target um, uh, the groups, the forums, the industries that you're interested in. Um, is let's see, Harish is asking, is regular posting a good move? Regular posting is the key, Harish. It is a good move. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, to interact, Harish says again, to interact to many people in large scale, get recognized by right people, for the talent we have. That's a pretty good summation, Harish. That's what we're after. Um, oh, that was your, I'm sorry, that was your, um, that was your goal. I gotcha. I scrolled a little too far on that one. Uh, okay, uh, Rick, I see that. Posting needs to look like it has a purpose, otherwise it looks like bragging. Okay, I think, I think that's being answered as we speak here. Uh, you bet, Harish. Thank you for interacting. I appreciate that. Okay, Michael, I was also answering uh, your question. My question is about how to do that when considering referring to slash talking about curated content. I was also answering your question. Michael, how to do, uh, I apologize, how to do what? when considering referring to or talking about curated content. I apologize, I lost track of that, that string. <clears throat> okay, so how to be more interesting than interested. Uh, 
Oh, okay, that's being answered, Michael, as we speak by somebody else. I apologize. Chris, Chris is asking, does it help to have a website or are the sites mentioned? Uh, it depends on what your goal is, Chris. Uh, websites are, in my opinion, just fancy digital brochures. Um, I'm not a fan. <clears throat> Frankly, that might be a surprise to some, but I think they're overrated and they have no call to action. They have uh, no sense of urgency, uh, generally speaking. Um, now, if you want to talk about a funnel, let's talk. We can talk about a funnel that has purpose and, and drives people to a certain end state. But a website, again, depending on your goal, I doubt it. I wouldn't, frankly, waste my time or my money. Uh, Ron is. Is it Ron? Uh, yes, Ron is asking, are there any legal potholes to be aware of other than standard issues like copyright when being online? I think uh, other than the obvious, Ron, I don't think so. I've not run into any. Um, you you want to be, you want to have a, 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 an ethical code in terms of plagiarizing and whatnot. Um, you know, but other than that, I, I've not run into any. Good question. Okay, I see that. Sachin, I'm not sure I got your name right, I apologize, has a good question. Is keeping personal profiles, he asks, like Instagram, unconnected with people that we are connected in the professional profiles, like LinkedIn, a good idea? Yeah, yeah, it is. <coughs> it is. Um, I really don't have more to say to, uh, about that than, yeah, it seems like you've got your, your arms wrapped around that. Um, <clears throat> that's why that's why LinkedIn is what it is. Michael, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not being too much value to you here, and I apologize for that. Uh, to, the, to the question about being seen as more interesting than interested, um, I think the, the content, the posted content will take care of that. Um, the relevant posted content will take care of that. Let me say it one more time. <laughs> I'll get it right one of these times. The relevant posted content in your target audience will take care of you being interesting. Uh, let's see. Rick asks, do I need to worry about my over 50 profile looking too millennial? Oh, okay. It looks like that was answered. Yeah, I would just, uh, you know, just this is all about being yourself. Uh, that's what I have to say about that. Just, just be you. Uh, once you start, you know, it's funny, guys. The people can sniff things out on, online. They really can. I, I don't know how it happens, but they can tell if we're trying. I'm not suggesting Rick you're doing this, but they can tell if we're trying to, you know, be a little younger. We all have <laughs> photos that are 10 years younger than we are uh, as our profile pics. But uh, yeah, be real. Uh, let's see, Kamal. See my business preview and your suggestion. Kamal, we'll be in touch with you through uh, through IEEE, the Computer Society. Okay, thanks, Michael. Okay, thanks, Sean. Okay, Scott, are we uh, are we over uh, over our time here? Are we good? Yeah, um, I think that's, yeah, we're pretty much at the top of the, the hour. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, um, thank you for a great um, web webinar, Michael. That was um, real informative. I think a lot of people, everyone on got a lot out of it, and there was um, great, great interaction from our audience. 
Um, we had a couple of questions, and as we said at the top, the slides will be emailed to you, and the recording as well will be sent to you um, in the next uh, day or so. So look for an email on that. Um, if you enjoyed this webinar, um, please um, let us know. Um, if you have any suggested topics, this is sort of a new, new series we're doing on um, for sort of young professionals or professionals really at any stage for um, sort of help them on more of the, the business side and um, your resume, building your profile, things like that. So if you have any topics you would like us to um, potentially do, please email us at membership at computer.org. Um, this was the last one we have scheduled for the year, but we'll certainly be scheduling some as we get in closer and in, into 2020. Um, <clears throat> again, thank you for your time and we'll um, see you on our next webinar. Michael, thanks again for a great webinar. Thanks very much.